I, I followed your campaign. Uh, you've been in Iowa a long time now, but um, something I've noticed the past few weeks is you maybe going farther to the right in our party, which is something that makes me nervous with you know all these hostile Republican plans we've had in Iowa for you know for nine years now in the Republican legislature and you know in Congress the past few years. But I just graduated from college, and I was privileged enough not to graduate with any student debt. But I'm going to law school now, and I mean it's just ridiculously expensive. You're someone who went to law school, graduated, I take it with a very small amount of debt, and someone who's made hundreds of millions of dollars in their life has been very I have a lot of debt. Yeah, or, or someone who's gone on to make hundreds of millions of dollars, I, I would hope you don't have any debt anymore. Um, student debt's a serious problem for me and my friends now, so when you say something like that, it makes me nervous that you don't know, understand the problem of student debt in America. So what are you going to do if you're not going to erase student debt? What are you going to do? to address the problem. If you hear people, when we talk about economic success, people in my generation can't buy houses. They can't you know, start a family. It's something I'm getting more and more nervous about. So what are you going to do sure. to address the serious problem? So I, again, I got a real plan to address student debt, which I'm going to tell you about right now. And, and not an impossible promise. I mean, stay, saying that we're going to, saying that we all know we're never going to write off all the student debt in this country and spend $2 trillion doing it, is not saying I support people having student debt. It's just me being honest with the American people. Because I think we all know that that's never going to happen. And nor would it make sense. Again, there's a lot of people who can totally afford their student debt. Why would we take a Google software engineer who's a few years out of school making $500,000 a year? What's that? I don't know a lot of Google software engineers. I also don't know a lot of people who benefited from that big tax break. The, it would have been a lot cheaper to write off the student debt. I, I'm not saying you know any of these people. I'm just saying under the proposal, their debt gets written off. And I just think that, you know what that is? That, to me, is regressive policy. That's actually giving breaks to people who don't need them. And I'm for giving breaks to people who need them. So let me tell you what I would do. First thing I would do is lower the rates on the student loans. Because right now, the federal government makes money on student loans. And I don't think the federal government should make money. So I think the federal government should charge a rate equal to its cost of borrowing, which is anywhere from a quarter to a third of the rates now. So that's the first thing. The second thing I would do is expand the amount of federal student debt that's available, which would reduce private debt. But in reality, the private debt is actually not the problem right now. Most student debt is, is public debt. The federal government is largely taking over the student lending program in the last 10 years. And defaults have gone from 3% to 22%. So ever since the federal government took over student lending about 10 years ago, the default rates on student loans have gone up a lot. Right? That's because in many ways, the federal government made these loans too available. Private colleges got them. All these people got them who should have never gotten them. So I'm going to close some of those loans. The third thing I'm going to do is expand the percentage of income repayment programs. Right? Because I think a smart way for young people to pay off their student loans is to think about it not as a fixed payment, but as a percentage of their income. So young people can make a choice. You could make a choice going to law school. I either want a fixed payment or I want a percentage of my income. And you're going to start your law school next year. So let's say you graduated from law school and you've got two different things you could do with yourself. Right? One, you could go work on Wall Street, maybe make a lot of money. And if you choose a percentage of your income repayment, you'll pay off that loan actually pretty fast. Or you could actually go into the public interest world. Right. And if you do that, your payment will be really small. And there's other programs for public interest lawyers that you know, would actually lead you to have your loans paid off if you do public service for 10 years for free. So that's what I would do to fix student loans. And I would make those programs available, not just for new kids, but for the current kids, so they could refinance their loans into that. And then the final thing I would do is to close what I think one, is the, one of the most unjust loopholes in student debt. And that is the fact that if you fall for bankruptcy, the only debt in the United States of America that cannot be discharged in bankruptcy is a student loan. No one wants to fall for bankruptcy. 
right? And people aren't just going to randomly file for bankruptcy to get rid of their student loans because they don't want the bankruptcy and the credit issues and all that stuff. But literally right now, if you're 35, 40 years old, you're struggling under your student debt, maybe you went to law school, you can't buy a house, you can't make your payments, and you're in kind of a financial kind of spot. If you fall for bankruptcy, that bankruptcy judge can't do anything to, to deal with your student loans. Can't do anything. Let me compare it to a situation. You know there's a company called Purdue Pharmaceuticals. Anyone ever heard of Purdue Pharmaceuticals? You know what they made? Opioids. You know how many people died from opioids in this country last year? 70,000 overdoses. There's stories that Purdue Pharmaceuticals might actually file for bankruptcy. Why? Because they're getting sued everywhere, as they should be. But when they file for bankruptcy, that judge will be able to take all those liabilities and discharge them. That tells you how unfair the situation is with our students. So under a Delaney administration, we're going to lower the rates on the loans. We're going to create a lot more of these percentage of income repayment programs. Right? We're going to do things to make sure school is more affordable. Because again, the rate of increase in college and law school and medical school has been crazy. Right? You can't have education growing at two to three times inflation. Again, 30 years ago, your average person cost of college was 15, 16% of their income. Now it's 70%. It's ridiculous. I want to drive reforms to lower the cost. I really want to create incentives for people to get kids out of school in three years, get people out of law school maybe in two years. I mean, that's a pretty easy way to save a lot of student debt, right? Now, you have to be creative. You have to be encouraged to do it. And then I want to actually allow students to offer bankruptcy. Those are real solutions to the student debt crisis. And I actually propose real solutions because I actually think it is a crisis. And I think if you propose stuff like writing it all off, which again, I don't believe is ever going to happen, in part because that's not where I would spend all tr $2 trillion. Because I, again, I want to do early childhood, I want to do pre-K, I want to do teacher's pay, I want to do community college. I mean, I'm sure you think those are important too. So I wouldn't put all the money in this one thing. But I also know the American people, the folks who just paid off their loans, the folks who are going to go to college and about to borrow some money, they're going to view it as terribly unfair. And so that's what I would do.